Welcome to Tom and Andy's podcast show. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the music factory Blackpool England. If you're easily offended or a snowflake, then go and murder someone else. How do? How do? Right, come on, let's not waste any time. Let's uh, have a look at what's going on around the world, shall we? On this, the 8th of the 8th, 2023. Well, the big news this week is a shocker. What a headline. Look at this, Andy. What? Oh, hang on. It says it's our very last podcast show. That's right, I'm afraid. Sit down before you fall down, listener. The good news is we're doing one more. (laughs) Calm down, everyone. Calm down. Calm down. Well, thanks ever so much, everyone, for all your support over the last year or so. We've had a great time. And if you want to listen in the future to any of our podcasts, you can catch them all on YouTube. Right, let's have a look at the news, shall we? Cruise ship passenger said his dream holiday was ruined after he was airlifted to hospital from the vessel against his wishes and left stranded more than 800 miles from home. Stephen Cassidy booked the luxury cruise to Norway as a joint birthday celebration with his wife Carol, but said the trip was ruined after he was misdiagnosed by the ship's doctor. I didn't feel like I had an infection. I just had a sore leg. <laughs> God, wow. God, no, they sent him home. Do you know something? I can't mention <laughs> any names here or any persons. I'm going to be honest with you, Tom, right? But I know somebody that was talking to a ship doctor one night, and she said to him, hmm? you're not really a doctor, are you? And he went, what do you mean? She says, because if you were a doctor, you wouldn't really be on here, would you? And he went, oh. no, you're right. Yeah. Oh, so he wasn't really? actually a qualified doctor and he was the ship's doctor. Oh, dear. Mm, just to bear that in mind. One. Man bought private jet after council gave him £655 million pound of taxpayers' money. A Tory council has been left effectively bankrupt after investing around half a billion pounds in a solar farm tycoon who used taxpayer money to buy luxury goods. Thurrock Council in Essex borrowed £655 million to invest in Liam Kavanagh's business, Rockfire Farm. Yeah, it was on telly, that. I saw that, yeah. Horrendous. Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. Just throw the dot around. Yeah. Wife sues husband for age discrimination after he left her. But the, the other woman was older. A wealthy accountant sued her husband for age discrimination because she wrongly thought he'd left her for a younger woman. Dear me. Mental. Yeah. The year is 1972 and some Australian military members are flying in a Royal Australian Air Force helicopter. As they fly over this isolated part of Papua New Guinea, with nothing but wetland and jungles, they spot something surprising. There, in the middle of the jungle, is a ginormous partially submerged aircraft. This is the same aircraft that has been missing for three decades. Wow, wow. Judo coach awarded rare ninth Dan at the age of, not 50, not 60, not 70, not 80, but 90 years of age. And that was... The the News. news. Good Good night. That's amazing, that, Tom. 90 years old. I know. Wow. What a guy. Yeah. I mean, how fit is he? he might, you know, I mean, just to do that, you've got to be really fit. Oh, you've got fit. to be fit for uh, uh, ninth Dan. Yeah. Because they usually go to seventh, don't they? Seventh Dan. That's right. Usually. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's mental. 90 it's years. It, you know, I mean, no, I get it. I, I get keeping fit. That's brilliant. But it's not always a good idea, you know, because the inventor of the treadmill died at the age of 54. Really? The inventor of gymnastics died at the age of 57. Really? 
the world bodybuilding champion, died at 41. Really? The fittest footballer <laughs> in the world, Maradona, died at 60. The inventor of KFC died at 94. Really? Inventor of Nutella, 88. Really? Inventor of Hennessy at 98. Well, the rabbit jumps all the time and lives for two years. And the turtle doesn't do exercises at all and lives to around 200 years of age. Well, I know what I'm going to do, mate. Cheers. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We We rest rest our case. case. It's time for... Even, Even I, I can, can answer, answer a couple, a couple of, of these buggers. In which Essex town was Birds of a Feather set? Hmm. Mm, interesting, this one. Yeah. And the answer is Chigwell. In which series did Rowan Atkinson play the role of Inspector Raymond Fowler? You know, I've never heard of that. Mm. The Thin Blue Line. I know no. The Thin Blue Line. I never really watched it. All oh, right. Never heard of it. Which BBC sitcom followed the friendship between two ex-lovers, Vincent and Penny, who met again by chance five years after he'd left her at the altar? Just good friends. Is that our mate? I'm going to say that was our mate, Tom, that was in that. Paul we Nicholas. We worked with him, didn't we? Yeah, Paul Nicholas. Yeah. The sequel to the comedy series Till Death Has Do Part was also based on a phrase from the wedding ceremony. What was it called? In sickness and in health. Oh, that was brilliant, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What was the full name of the cantankerous landlord played by Leonard Rossiter in the classic sitcom Rising Damp? (laughs) One of my favourites, Tom. Yeah. And the answer is Rupert... Rigsby. I my didn't know God his first mate. name, though. I, I knew it was Rupert, yeah. Name. My God, Miss my Jones. My God, Miss Jones, don't you dare me, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>, Mr. Rigsby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. Funny, Rigsby. <laughs> and Alan, Alan, the black yeah. guy, he was funny as well. Oh, funny. Richard brilliant, Beckinsdale, brilliant. he was great in that as well, wasn't yeah. he? He died young, didn't he, Tom? He did, yeah. Bless yeah. him, yeah. He died his young. daughter's very well known, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of Phoebe's twin sister in Friends? Oh, what? Ursula. Occasionally, seen taking his wife out for a spin on his motorbike and sidecar, what was the name of Nora Batty's husband in the sitcom Last of the Summer Wine? That's a difficult one, isn't it? It's a it? difficult one, this, if you didn't watch it. Anyway, the answer is Walter or uh-huh. Wally. Ah, right. What is the first name of the female comedy character played by Irish actor Brendan O'Carroll? Agnes Brown. Mrs. Brown's Boys. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Mrs. Brown Boys. Very funny. Very, very that's funny. That's if you like old jokes. They're brilliant. Yeah, if you like old gags and you've not yeah. heard them before, you'll find it funny. In which classic sitcom was young Mr. Grace the owner and chairman of a retail store. Mm. Oh, I know this one. Again, another classic sitcom, Tom, and the answer is, are you being served? Yeah. The Grace Brothers. Yeah. Which show featured a horse called Hercules had a theme tune called Old Ned and was remade in Sweden under the name Albert and Herbert? I didn't know that bit, but of course it was. Step to one sum. <laughs> and that was <laughs> Even I, I can answer, answer some of these, these buggers. There were some good uh, questions there, Tom, in that. Yeah, they were all similar sort of they were, uh, yeah. questions, yeah, but you know, in sickness and health. Yeah. And and all those great classics, weren't they so good? Funny, you, I mean, can, you can still watch them now, Tom, and laugh at them. Yeah. Step to and son, are you being yeah. served? Yeah. You know, I mean, people used to stay in and watch them, yeah. didn't they? Last of the Summer Wine, Rising Damp, Sickness and, yeah. you know. It and was funny. all good. Yeah, funny, funny, funny. 
Yeah. Which will, yeah, here's a question for you. In sickness and health, rising damp, are you being served step two and sun? Which one would you choose as your favourite out of those? My personal favourite would have to be rising damp. Yeah, I was just going to say that myself. Yeah. The others were very, very close behind, but yeah. uh, I think rising down. I think Miss the next one possibly would have been step two and sun. They used to go some. Great I would, yeah. I go they? in. The, I go rising damp. Yeah. Step two and sun. Yeah. And then in sickness and in health, are you being yeah. served? Yeah. Yeah, but they all deserve a great praise, yeah. don't they? Were brilliant. Yeah. No, they were great programs, Tom. Funny. Oh, listen, to us reminiscing. Reminiscing, oh, oh, I know. Gee, Them were the days. Never mind. I'll have another drink of wine. Have a drink of wine. Because now it's time for... Oh, my God. Be careful not to skid your kecks. <laughs> Making toast late one night, facing the kitchen bench, eating for a good 10 or 15 minutes, cleaned up and turned around, and every single cupboard door and cutly drawer was open. They were all closed when I went into the kitchen, and there was no way anyone could have snuck in and done it, because I was home alone. Oh dear, dear. have Have you noticed noticed? it's It's always always home home alone? alone. No No witnesses, witnesses. lying bottom itch. I worked from 2pm to 11pm at a gas station. I had a gentleman look at me in the eyes and asked if I am enjoying my last day on the earth. Walked away before I could answer. Oh, oh dear. dear. Well, well, at, at least, least he was wrong. wrong. It's boring, boring serving petrol, petrol, isn't it? it? You, you need, need a bit, bit more attention seeking, you sack itch. <laughs> I went camping by myself. One night I woke up at 3am, not being able to fall back to sleep. I just lay there listening to the woods. Then I heard a faint, hello. I was petrified. I felt so vulnerable in the tent. I never figured out what it was. Who the fuck goes camping camping on their own? own? You should have said to me, and another mental mental friend friend who hears voices voices went camping camping with me. me. This actually happened fairly, fairly, (laughs) fairly, fairly, fairly. This actually happened fairly recently. I was home alone one day with my dog and two of my friend's dogs. Out of nowhere, they all started barking and looking up towards our loft. As they're quieting down, I hear someone in a mocking, calm tone say, Bark. They all started going crazy again. Oh Oh dear. dear. Here Here we we go go again, again, home alone. alone. Ever, Ever thought, thought of going, going camping, camping, you mad, mad pilot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, some of them stories there, Tom. I know. Yeah, but they are, though. You are, the, most people, they're always on their own. They are, aren't they? Do you think they're just looking for attention? Get off. They were looking for attention. They'd do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Mental. And what, what were you frightened of when you were a kid? I remember being frightened of you. I don't really recall being frightened of anything in particular. I didn't like the dark as a kid, Mm. if truth be known. You know what I mean? I always liked a bit of a light on. I wasn't a fan of the dark. But apart from that, Tom, um, I wasn't really frightened of anything. Yeah, I I was just frightened of ghosts. You know, I don't... Of course, you're not born with that, with the fears and anything. Somebody must have said to me, ghosts. Yeah, yeah. It might have been my brother, I don't know. Yeah, but no, um, yeah, I was never frightened about anything really. Probably, probably you know, the, the thought of a ghost. Might yeah. Get, but nothing, uh, nothing. So I think I was frightened of the dark as well for a yeah. period. You know, not probably I, a few months, but it's a horrible feeling when you're a child. Isn't it, it is, and I think you know what, Tom. I think most kids are frightened of the dark. Yeah. You know. Yeah. E- even today's kids are frightened yeah. of uh, of it. You know what I mean? So anyway, there we go. Yeah. Please excuse Agatha and Catherine. They're a little deaf. Hello, I'm Agatha. And I'm Catherine. We are Agatha. And Catherine. Better known as Agatha. And Catherine. But you can call us Agatha. 
I'm Catherine. And we're here to solve your problems. Like Ruth's problem. She's 82. She says, I'm into pottery. I have my own wheel and pottery away for hours on end. In the past, it's just been for fun. But now it's turned into a small business. I sell cups, saucers, small plant pots and large jugs. Unfortunately, I can't keep up with demand. Something has to give. Do you think I should concentrate purely on my large jugs or reduce them in size? Catherine, it's over to you. Please excuse me. I'm a little deaf. <laughs> Ruth, you won't believe how many letters we get about large jugs. Thinking of reducing them in size. You see, when we get older, we don't need them anymore. They're redundant in every way. No more fiddling with them, tweaking them, cuddling up and going to sleep on them. And of course, having them gawped at 24 hours a day. I myself have a fair pair, would you say, Agnes? Very fair pair, Catherine. In fact... Huge, would you say, Agnes? Very huge, Catherine. Some would say massive, wouldn't they, Agnes? Bleeding humongous, I'd say, Catherine. But it doesn't bother me, no. To be honest, I make use of them. And you want to try it. When I eat my dinner, instead of using a tray, I rest my plate on my bangers. Tablecloth. Knife, fork, dessert spoon, salt, pepper, vinegar, small jug with a rose. Oh yes, and me pudding. And now Maud, 87. 87, that's old. 87, Mohammed Street, Kirkham. Maud says, I'm thinking of getting a pet to keep me company. I've had a look at some options and I've decided on a dog. I'm contemplating whether to have a Shih Tzu. <clears throat> Another question. Would you keep the lead loose? Agatha, it's over to you. My deafness is... My deafness is getting much worse these days, Maud. But I've got the outline of your problem. You're loose and constipated all at the same time. I heard that bit. That's unusual. All I can say is, yes, you need a shit soon. <laughs> You're welcome, welcome lovers. Hey, good old Catherine and Agnes. Oh, we'll miss them, won't we? We will, mate. We will. Yeah. <laughs> we'll miss what them. What pet too. would you have if you if you have you haven't got any pets, have you? I haven't. No, I've no pets. Uh, but I grew up with pets. Our house yeah. were like Doctor Doolittle's. Was it? Oh yeah, we had all sorts. Uh, and yeah. I do like pets. And you know, my daughter's yeah. got a dog. My mum had a cat for years. That's uh, beautiful, that dog yeah. of hers. Oh, that? beautiful, yeah. And my girlfriend's got a dog, and just she just got a kitten actually last week. All oh, right. Uh, a nice little tabby kitten, yeah, called Lola. Oh, she was a show. A Lola. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'd like a little dog, but uh, I think I know I've got to take it out every day. Sad that. Yeah, it's you know they they can be tying uh, pets, and that's the reason why I've never had a dog because you know traveling and being away, Tom, it's not fair, yeah. is it? You know. No, no. You've really got to think about it. I think properly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, Tom, let's move on because we've been inundated, I oh. kid you not, yeah. inundated yeah. with <gasps> an email. Oh, oh, wow. Paul from Devon. There have been rumours that Elvis didn't die and he's living as someone else. <laughs> 
opinions, please. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what to think. I mean, they've been saying that since the day he died, haven't they? Yeah, and you know what, Tom? I think, let's just say he hasn't died and he is living as somebody else. You can't blame him, can you? Oh, no. No, not at all. I don't think he is alive. I think he's dead, you know, but... I can see, you know, if it's driving you insane, uh, then you've got the money to get out of it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, just pay people off. Yeah. And and get out of it and probably live a reasonably calm life with money in the bank then from then on, you know. That's the thing, you know, it gets too much, doesn't it? I mean, I remember watching a documentary on Elvis. Yeah. And it was in his Las Vegas hotel suite. And he got up one day, heading towards the door. And his entourage were there. They went, what are you doing? They went, I'm going for a burger, man. Yeah. They went, no, we'll go and get you a burger. They went, no, man, I want to go and get a burger. Well, look, yeah. no, we'll get you a burger. And he, he sort of snapped at him and said, no, man, I'm going to go and get the fucking goddamn burger. Yeah. And they went, you can't. He went, what do you mean I can't? They went, you can't. You're Elvis Presley. If you go out on, on that street, you'll get mobbed. So yeah. we'll go and get you a burger. And it was that point I thought, wow. All he yeah. wanted to do, Tom, was go and walk down the street yeah. and go and get a burger and sit in a yeah. diner and just have a burger. And he couldn't do that. The Beatles went through that period, <laughs> yeah. didn't they, as well? It was terrible. It's like it being be in awful. prison in a way, isn't it? In your own, yeah. you know, people think yeah. it's a glamorous lifestyle, but when you can't go out of an hotel suite because you'll get mobbed yeah. by the public, yeah, it's not very enjoyable, is it? He uh, he went into um, he was listening to the radio one night, and he went into a competition on the radio, uh, doing Elvis impersonations, and he came second. I believe so. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> came second. That's brilliant, that isn't it? Right. Anyway, so uh, Paul from Devon. Um, well, we don't know really, do we? I don't think we'll ever know the truth, and never. No, we don't know. Say that about Michael Jackson as well. Don't Same, we? yeah, so, Michael Jackson, another one that you know yeah. could have. So we don't know, I'm afraid, mate. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. Terry from Bristol says, would you ever buy a brand new car that will lose £5,000 as soon as you leave the forecourt? Well. Well, the answer to that, Terry, from me is, no, I wouldn't. Well, the answer from me is, yes, I've done it. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, I've done it a few times, yeah, but I wouldn't do it again. No. You see, the difference is losing £5,000 when it's your business is a different ball game. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's um, I used to buy them through my business. Yeah, it, I actually, I, I did once. I actually bought a brand new car once, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I did too, yeah. And it's for your business. That, But as a private punter, I think it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Margaret from Lincoln, do you think the scrapping that scrapping cash would be a good idea? Uh, you go on this one, Tom. You go first because I've got something to say about this. Oh right. Um, well, if you've got something important to say, do you want to say yours? Well, I go okay, then. I don't think it's a good idea scrapping cash, Tom. Why is that, mate? Well, I'll tell you for why. Because I'll give you an example now: a fifty-pound note. Yeah. Gets passed on to the butcher. Oh, yeah. Right? Then the butcher passes that on to a supplier. For 50 quid. Right, 50 quid. And then that supplier then goes to a shop and buys some groceries, say. And that grocer then passes that on to another shop. Yeah. So that £50 note can be passed round. Mm. 10 times, Tom, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it still has a value of £50. Yeah. So getting rid of cash and going through the bank on mm-hmm. digital currency, right, that £50 note starts at £50. Yeah. Yet the bank take a charge to put it through the card machine. Yeah. So it gets passed on again. Gets another charge. All along the road, yeah. And as uh, before long, that £50 becomes zero. But who's got the £50? Yeah. The banks. 
the only argument is, I don't mean I'm arguing the point, but the only argument is what you said at the beginning when the butcher had the 50 quid. When he buys his choppers and things, he doesn't actually hand over fifty pound note, does he? He'll no. hand over a check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even a check, Tom, wouldn't oh, incur whatever. charges. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. It never that's, incurred a but, charge checks. No, but all right then. Uh, th then he uses his card. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but, the bloke comes in. He said, "Do you want some new choppers?" And he goes, "Yeah." yeah. He says, "Is there a thousand quid?" Right, here's my card. So he wouldn't give him. Fifty pound notes, would they? Yeah, I get that. Like, as in when you're buying things to that value, but I just think we've got to keep cash circulating, Tom. Because yeah. if we don't, what happens when the internet goes down? Mm. Really? Oh yeah, you there's know? all sorts of things. To when think when the internet goes down, you can't buy anything. You can't do anything. There's lots of fours in the yeah, game. Yeah. You see, the the fours would be that. Uh, it stopped drug dealers dealing in cash, uh, for, for one. Um, it stopped people scamming. It, it stopped them, not scamming, uh, fiddling, mm -hmm. you know, under the counter. One day, I think, what will happen is everybody must be registered. And I mean everybody. And then if I buy something from you, it automatically goes to the Inland Revenue and they take out their slice of tax and then send the rest on to you. Mm. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but I'm saying I think possibly one day something along those lines will happen, I think. Because there's too much fiddle money around the world, isn't there, really? Well, there has been, but it's get, that's getting less and less, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. But then again, it's all about being sensible and... You know, <laughs> yeah. being yeah. sensible, really, you've got to be, you know, yeah. you can't just live entirely off cash because the tax man will go, well, how are you living off this cash? Where are you getting it from? That's you know it. What I mean? yeah, so, exactly, you, so you've got to yeah. be, you've got to be clever and you've got to be sensible. Right. Um, you've got to fiddle, you mean. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, I just think it's dangerous going all digital. I really do, mate. I think it's very dangerous. I think, we should, I don't think we should, if it ever happened, we should all say tomorrow morning we're digital. I don't think that would work. Yeah. That'd be crazy, right? Yeah, right. I anyway, I just think they'll have more control of, over us, Tom, and monitor what you're spending. And th there'll yeah. be a point then. Oh, you can't spend that. You've already spent that this week on that. That's right. That's they the will. danger. That's the danger. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know I mean, Sally from Newcastle. Why are you bugger? Hey. hey. My daughter has wanted to be a doctor since starting university three years ago. However, she saw an advertisement for RAF recruiting to take their flying licence free of charge. Now, after one lesson, she's talking about joining the RAF. What do you think? Well, no, I'll let you answer this, Tom. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know what I think, because I'm mad on flying. It's something, um, the funny thing was, when I was doing my pilot's licence, all these well, they were really children. They were 16 year old, and the RAF had brought, say, about 15 of them. And they were all doing the pilot's license at 50, at 16. Really? And, yeah, oh, yeah. And then eventually they're all solo flying, and they're off flying. But the funny thing was, when they'd finished, all the mummies and daddies had come and pick them up because they couldn't drive home. <laughs> really? That's mad, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's to get them to join the RAF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were flying That's around mental. at 16. That's mental, that. Yeah. No, but, I mean, they did learn, and they learned properly, you know, from yeah, yeah. from instructors, and they, they, they were as good as what any of us were, obviously, but they were just young kids, tiny, <laughs> tiny young kids, a bit frightening, to be honest. Wow. When you think, oh, I'm going flying, well, I won't go just yet. That lot are up there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, do you think it would be a good idea to join the RAF? Oh, it's a difficult one, that. A doctor or the RAF? The chances of being a pilot in the RAF are very very difficult, but the chances of being a doctor are far easier, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I would have thought so. What if you've got the intelligence, well, a bit like you, you know, if you've got the intelligence yeah. to become a doctor, Yeah, it's probably easier than, like, say, go, trying to become a pilot in the RAF. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you wouldn't have to put up with all that shite at the NHS, would you? If you're well, there is that. There is that. 
Uh, Robert from Keithley, Yorkshire. Do you drink tea? If so, what make? We have some weird questions, don't we? We do, but I can answer this quite confidently, Tom. Go on, then. Well, I do drink tea, Robert, and you'd be pleased to know, being from Keithley in Yorkshire, the tea that I drink is Yorkshire tea. Cause that's I'd have the never best. guessed that. <laughs> it's the best, Tom. I drink tea, and I drink Lancashire tea. No, I don't. I drink Yorkshire tea. It's the best. It's the best tea out there. It is. It's Bar brilliant. On. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's uh, not far from India, is it, Yorkshire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yorkshire tea made yeah. in India. Yeah, mad. But yeah, yeah it is the best. It is the best tea, definitely. Right, that's that one. Thanks, Robert. And Lynn from Birmingham, would you swap your life with Elon Musk? Can I go? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd swap my bank account with him. <laughs> yeah, definitely swap my bank account with him. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know uh, about my life. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I would. Would you? Yeah, without a doubt. Do you think he's up yeah. to something? Do you think he's up to something? Him? They all are. They're all crooks, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, do you think, you know, you know what I mean? He says one thing, Anybody. but does he mean the other? You know what I mean? Well, that's the game they play, isn't it? They're yeah. just uh, crooks and they lie and they cheat. And it's to get all they're interested in is making dosh. And that is it. The be all yeah. and the end all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'd, uh, I'd, I'd swap my life now for him, without a doubt. What mm. a great life. Oh, what yeah, I mean... Mm. I don't mean the money. No, no. I'm talking about the things he does. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's done some interesting things, hasn't he? Yeah, fabulous. He's going up, apparently, head-to-head with Zuckerberg. Have you heard? I know, they're having a boxing match. Well, something? no, I think they're going head-to-head in a, a debate kind of thing. Go, you know. Oh, I thought it was a boxing match. No, I don't think it's a boxing match. They're going head-to-head <laughs> on something, yeah, head-to-head. <laughs> Just shows you yeah. how headlines can get mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, nice one. That'd be good, it says, it? Yeah, Elon Musk going head-to-head with arch-rival Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, mm. nice one. Be interesting. And that was Inundated, Inundated with, with an, an email. email. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's play the very last Clever... Or who knows? Blimey. <laughs> well, that had to be special for the last one, didn't it? We actually sounded a bit special on it as well. <laughs> it bent the needle on the... <laughs> Just on the a bit. I know it did. <laughs> oh. Right, now, it, because it's our last podcast, have we mentioned that? We've decided to choose what we think have been the best gags over the year. So... Here we go. I've, oh, did you choose all yours, mate? I, I hope we've not chosen the same ones. Yeah, I've chose mine. All oh, right, brilliant. Yeah, have you chose right. yours? I'm ready, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's the yeah. the best gags of the best gags. That's it. To become the outright champion. Oh, no, Is that don't, what we're doing? don't put pressure on us. Uh, right, okay, outright champion. A man goes to a bar and sees a large girl dancing on a table. He walks over to her and says, Wow, nice legs. She's flattered and replies, You really think so? The man says, Definitely. Most tables would have collapsed by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that gag. You remember it, I don't remember you? It's it. a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one, but you messed up. Hey, why? You never put a clever or a kahuna <gasps> on it. Tom. Oh, what a yeah! Uh, uh, the very uh, last one. No, but I'm going to give you a four for the gag, and I would have give you a double clever. Oh no! And a kahuna on top. No. So I want you to put seven in brackets, Ma- but Ma- mark your four. Oh no! What a shocker! Okay, I'll have to fight back. I'll be keeping my eye on you. Clever, clever. Okay. I'm writing a report on yesterday's high winds. It's a draft at the moment. (laughs) Nice. 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 
Is that clever, clever? Clever, clever. It's two clevers, isn't it? It and is, it's a yeah. Four and it's a six, man. Six, great. Yeah, you've, yeah, yeah. I'm well told, may I say. Thank you. Yeah. Um, clever. Kahuna. Ooh. A huge thank you to my neighbour for allowing me to borrow a large sheet of plastic covering. Tarpaulin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny how you remember the gags when you hear them again? I know. I think it was you told that one. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Uh, good gag. Uh, you get your yeah. four and you're clever and you're kahuna, mate. Six. Six, yeah. Clever. Clever. Oh. I've been making Motown puns for about three years. Four tops. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard them still. Laugh. Yeah, funny, aren't they? What was it? Clever, clever? Clever, clever. Yes, got to be clever, clever, that. It's a six, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Clever. <laughs> clever. Ooh. Kahuna. Ooh. I think it's a disgrace on society and our education system when after 50 years, most people have no idea who Neil Armstrong is. Or what kind of trumpet he played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, another good. I remember that one. Um, I'll give you your three and your four, so seven, mate. Thank you. Yeah, Took Clever, Clever chance. and Kahuna, that wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> clever. Clever. <laughs> kahuna. Oh. People said I'd never get over my obsession with Phil Collins. It started years ago. Take a look at me now. <laughs> oh, God. What was it? A clever, clever kahuna? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to mark you down. R really? One for the joke. I'm going to give you three for the joke. All right, okay. But I'm going to give you the clever, clever, the other three. That's okay, six. mate. Uh, I hope you don't mind. No, no, yeah. fall out on the last program. No, no, we're not, no. I know what you're right. doing. I know, I know what game you're playing, though. Yeah. I, know what, I know what game That's you're playing. I'm fiddling the numbers. I know you, you're marking them down there. I can see you. Yeah, yeah. Right, here's a nice one, if you remember this one. Uh, this was from November last year. Clever Kahuna. Oh. Yeah. I was in Sainsbury's earlier, and I said to the checkout lady, this has got today's date on it, love. Can I have a discount? She says, do you want the bloody newspaper or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. It's clever, though. Yeah, it's it? clever, yeah. Clever. Yeah. I'll give you four and you... Do you have a, a clever kahuna? Clever on kahuna, because yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a kahuna. Really. Yeah, give you your six on that, pal. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. I'm working hard to catch up here. I'm struggling, but I'm working hard on it. Clever. <laughs> clever. <laughs> I couldn't get a taxi home last night. So I went in the kebab shop and ordered a delivery to my address and then got in with the driver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. I remember that one. That's a six. Cheers, mate. Nice one, yeah. Um, clever. <laughs> clever. <laughs> clever. <laughs> oh. I was shocked at the price of those Ancestry DNA kits. So rather than spend £150 to get the family round one table, I just announced that I'd won £150 million on the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is a clever, clever, clever. clever gag. What, do you have a clever, clever? No, clever, clever, clever. Oh, you had three clevers? Three clevers. Oh, well, that's yes. a good job, actually, because yeah. I'm going to mark you down on the gag. Oh, Only dear. slightly. I thought you could have told it a little bit better. <laughs> just a little bit. You just stumbled a little bit. So I'm going to give you three. <laughs> and I'm going to give you three. So six points. Thank you very much. You're Beautifully. welcome. Beautifully worked out, Andy. Well done. <laughs> I wondered how you are going to get around that one. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at this one. Oh, clever <laughs> kahuna. My friend has just passed his master's degree in salad studies. He's got Littis after his name now. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Clever Kahuna? Clever Kahuna, that one. 
Lovely. I'm just going to mark you down one. Oh! For a th yes. Three, four, five. Okay. Oh. Do you want to know the reason? Go on. You said lettuce instead of lettuce. Lettuce, yeah, lettuce. No. I did. You you heard it. I heard it. I noticed it. I... Right. Clever. <laughs> Clever. I got fired from the calendar factory for taking a day off. <laughs> <laughs> simple, simple. Yeah, six points, mate. Lovely, thank you, thank you. Right, last gag this, Tom. Hey, yeah, hey, this is for Champion of Champions. Champion of Champions. Uh, this will be a tour, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh. Clever. Clever. Don't you hate it when someone answers their own questions? I do. Oh, <laughs> oh, beautiful. Eh? Oh, Good. I'll tell you what, what a shame. I had to give you three clevers for that. Would you? Yeah, what a beautiful little gag that. Nice, isn't it? Ready. This Ready. is me. Four what? and a six is ten. And a seven is seventeen. And a six is twenty-three. And a six is twenty nine, and a six is thirty five. That's me. Thirty five. Six and a six is twelve, and a six is eighteen, and a six is twenty four, and a six is thirty, and a five. Here you look. Did you, did you give me a five on the last gag? No, I swapped them around so I didn't have to add up six and five. <laughs> They're all like, no, it's a five and a six. But I did a six and a five just adding up. Ah, right, got you. Look at it, look at it. Look the... at it, 35, 35. Hey. Do you know something, Tom? Yeah. I don't think we can argue with that, mate. No. The very last one. Yeah. The champion of champions... And it's a friendly draw. Brilliant. Cheers, pal. And I'm drinking to it. Yes. Pitching. Cheers, pal. I've got a nice gag for you. I'll just tell you one quick gag, actually. You're getting no points. No points. No, no. This is out of uh, the thing. My friend rang me the other day. He said, I'm dating this bird that identifies as a wheelie bin. So I've got a bit of a dilemma. I said, what's your dilemma? He said, well, I don't know whether I'm taking her out Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, funny. Yeah. And now it's time for a bit, a of, bit of boys, boys chat. chat. So go on, Andy. Well, I'd just like to say, Tom, it's been uh, thoroughly enjoyable doing this podcast for everybody. Because do you remember... Yeah. We started doing this podcast just as we sort of got coming out of lockdown and we, we sort of went back into lockdown a bit, didn't we, as well? And yeah. we were sort of in and out of lockdowns, if you like, yeah. at the time, well, you know. We are at your house having a coffee and we said, what can we That's do? That's right, yeah. And then things flared up a little bit again, didn't they? Remember, yeah. so it yeah. kept us going at that time, Tom, I think. Yeah. So I just want to say it's been thoroughly enjoyable and I hope we yeah. brought a bit of joy to our listener. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and like we said before, you know, they're yeah. there to be heard on YouTube going forward. Uh, yeah. And tell your friends. And you never know. Never say never, Tom. No, no, absolutely. Never say never. No, absolutely. We could be back. You never yeah, know. Yeah, you never know you? what's around the corner. We could come back with something else we don't know, do we? No. Who knows? You know. Like we're saying, in our business, Tom, you know, never say never on anything. So Anyway. Yeah. Fingers crossed, something will crop up somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But so, I'd just like to say it's been brilliant as well because I like working with Andy. It's been, it's always good fun, and we do edit edit it down. I wish you could hear the bits we take out to be truthful. <laughs> that might be good, actually, Tom. I don't know if you still just, <laughs> just edit all the shit together one time. Jeez, put it on. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh no! We might double I, our audience and get two listeners. <laughs> I, can't, I haven't got enough bleeps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, it's been great. So, uh, and that was a, a bit of boys, boys chat. chat. So now we're off to court one, where you, the listener, yes, that's you, will be the jury. 
Did the claimant win or lose the case? You decide. All stand. Morning, all. Judgmentally. <clears throat> Is this your case, Mr. Wobble Knob? Woggle Dob. Yes, this is my case, my lord. Very nice. Carry on. My lord, with the help of my friend and lawyer, we'd like to reenact three changes that were said out loud in a court of law. Are they true or false? Exchange one. How was your first marriage terminated? By death. And by whose death was it terminated? Take a guess. Exchange two. Can you describe the individual? He was about medium height and had a beard. Was this a male or female? Well, unless the circus was in town, I'm, I'm going with the male. Exchange three. Do you recall the time that you examined the body? The autopsy started around 8.30pm. And Mr Denton was dead at that time? Well, if not, he was by the time I finished. Were these true or made-up exchanges in court? You decide. They were, in fact, true. Next! And that's it for our very last podcast show. We hope you've enjoyed us buggering about for the last year or so while you're doing your ironing. Uh, we've had a fantastic time, as we said earlier. And a big thank you from me. I think we can say we've had a belter. Thanks to our sponsor, the Music Factory Blackpool. And not forgetting our producer, Doris. Thanks, Doris. What a pair of twats. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. And the final word from Stephen Hawking.